beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy anytime we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy anytime we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. stay blessed no matter what else you have that represents growth in order of priority, this is the first biblical index. Your degree of conformity to the image and the character of Jesus Christ in experience. That means if I look at your life, you don't have to tell me I've been a Christian for a long time. I, it, you should look like Jesus if you are truly his image. Please, please look at me. If you look at the mirror, what do you see there? You see the object, is that true? The assignment of the mirror is to be a perfect reflection of the object. That means, and, and please, I, I hope that this does not trouble you, but that means if I look at your life, more than seeing a Yoruba man, more than seeing an Igbo man, more than seeing a plateau man, I should see one who heals from a kingdom whose foundation is not earthly. That means that you, have, you should have been so immersed in the life of Christ, I should be at a loss as to your geographic connection. If that does not happen, you are not growing. I shouldn't see you and say you are behaving like them. And without being prophetic, I can almost guess where you come from because you are still connected to the limitations of territory Colossians chapter 3 a long reading I'm not sure we'll have the liberty to stretch that far but 1 to 15 let's try and see how five the media works with us we may be fast media please help us grace for you in Jesus name so that we'll work together and we'll make it really fast Colossians 3 and we'll begin our reading from verse 1 I want you to please follow carefully Colossians 3, 1 to 15. It says, if ye then be risen with Christ, that means if it is true that this is a fact, seek those things, it says, which are above where Christ seated on the right hand of God. Next verse. Set your affection on things above, not on things of the earth. Now, he never said do not enjoy the things of the earth, but he says your affection are we together? Your focus must be on things above and not things that are in the earth. Why? For ye are dead, he says. Remember our definition of death? That means that you have been caught away from another life and you have been reconnected to another. You are dead and your life is hid with Christ and in God. Now the list begins. It says, when Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then we shall also appear with him in glory mortify therefore the word mortify means to deaden your members which are upon the earth let's read the list now ready number one it says fornication number two uncleanliness number three inordinate affection are we together number four all those long words there number five 
covetousness, which is idolatry. So there are many idol worshippers. You don't need to have a small image in your house. The Bible says when you desire something is equal, their weight measured the same in the realm of the spirit. An idol worshipper and a covetous person are in the same group, spiritually speaking, he says. Next verse. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh upon the children of disobedience. Next verse. In the which ye also walked in some time when ye lived in them. But now put off all these. Believers, are we ready? Because he groups it into two. The first list looks very bad and immoral and many of us escape easily. Let's try this next set now. Put off these also. Are you ready? Anger. Wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Believers, lie not to one another. Uh -huh. Seeing that ye have put off the old man. Remember, the water of the word is washing us now. Are we together now? Yes. Seeing that you have put on the old man with his deeds. Next verse. And have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge. Are you seeing how the new, the new man is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him? Next verse, please. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision or uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond or free, but Christ is all and in all. Next verse. Put on therefore. So he tells you what to put off. And then he tells you what to put on. As the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, which is patience, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. You see immediately that they are not the same. You can forgive and not forbear. To forbear means to factor in the weakness of that individual and create a system of accommodation because it will happen again and again and again. If any have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave, he says, as Christ forgave you, you too, please forgive. I can't see the verses. When we get to 15, please let me know. He says, above all this, hallelujah, put on love. King James says, charity, I like the word love and he calls it the bond of perfectness. Let's stop there. Your degree of conformity to the image and the character of Christ. Second Peter chapter 1 from verse 5 to 7. Is God helping us this morning? Second Peter chapter 1 from verse 5 to 7. Second Peter. He says, and beside this, giving all diligence, Add to your faith virtue. The word virtue there means moral excellence. Add moral excellence to your faith. So don't just say, I am a man of faith. Congratulations. What have you added to it? Moral excellence, he says. And to moral excellence, add virtue. Add to virtue, to, to, to virtue knowledge. Next verse. And to knowledge, add self-control. Because the side effect of knowledge is pride. And to temperance, add patience. And to patience, godliness. Reading to seven. And to godliness, brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, love, which is charity. Hallelujah. He says, add to this. Add to this. Add to this. That means, in as much as it's fair to pat your back and say, wonderful, I think I've done well here. You must be sincere enough to say, have I added this? Have I added virtue to faith? Have I added knowledge? Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23. Galatians 5, 22 and 23. We call it the fruit of the Spirit. Now notice, notice that there is a difference between the gift of the Spirit and the fruit of the spirit are we together you can give a gift to a child you can even give a gift 
to an inanimate thing you can drop whatever it is a lower animal whatever it is but a fruit is proof that the tree has grown are we together now yes growth must happen before fruit bearing happens in a tree but the fruit of the spirit is this there's a version that says the fruit of the recreated human spirit is love in all of his various expressions then he begins to list this but let's work with this it says love joy peace patience or long suffering gentleness goodness faith meekness temperance and then he makes a very striking statement he said against this there is no law do you know what this means he's not just talking about the old and new testament he's saying that anywhere you see human beings who need to coexist well there is no law that should fight this that means this is the ideal atmosphere for human beings to be able to live profitably this is not about spirituality you get dogs because you are looking for peace you lock your gates because you are looking for peace is that true all of the things that we look for in friends we look for in in employees we look for in in our children is simply an atmosphere that has a lavish display of the fruit of the spirit without living in this atmosphere you will die that your spirit was only designed to be alive when it finds itself in this atmosphere where there is love there is peace why do you go on vacation you are attempting to simulate this atmosphere are we together yes your name should not be the first reason why people suspect you are a christian john ruth deborah hannah if you have to tell people your name for them to know you are a christian you are not a christian enough are we together that the moment you open your mouth and communicate in fact your very persona should have been so absorbed into the life of God that when people look at you before they say you are a preacher before they say you are a businessman a lecturer a career person their first verdict and conclusion about you should be this man is truly the child of God my greatest testimony the testimony I covet is that at the end of my life it shouldn't be that people say this man is this a great man you did this and that those things are they honestly don't mean anything to me i covet the testimony of enoch the bible says and enoch walked with god not walked for god you can walk for god and not walk with god you can give to the house of god and not walk with God you can preach for God you can do business for God and yet not walk with God the character of the spirit finding expression my charge to us this morning in light of this first biblical index for spiritual maturity is that we must be sincere and look at our lives can I truly say the character of the spirit is finding expression in my life what is what is the the report card from my place of work among my contemporaries my spouse my children in church I'm not talking of eye service I'm talking of genuine spiritual growth that people look at you today and they can say he may be any other thing else but I know that this one is true he's a Christian when John was speaking about John the Baptist he said there was a man sent from God he never associated him with his earthly his, his, his earthly origin again he said this man he's demonstrated something that is not earthly there was a man 
sent from God. Years ago, I went to preach. It was for a crusade in Kano. And while I was preaching and ministering, I ministered to a dear mother and this woman came out to be prayed for. And when I looked at this woman, the, you could see someone who was an epitome of a genuine Christian. The life and the energy that flowed from this woman was compelling. And then the woman told me something. She said, by the privilege of God's grace, held her house, her Bible, and she finishes the whole Bible every 15 days. I said, who should pray for who now? How do you start praying for this woman? What am I going to tell God to do? Believe me, especially for those of us who have the privilege of being in the ministry of the gospel, people don't care how sound you are preaching or what kind of thing. They want to know that you are a genuine child of God. That is the most important thing first. And before you are happy that I'm talking about preachers alone, this involves every other person too. You can't say, I'm not a preacher, so I am allowed to do my own thing. Mm -mm. This is a call to higher levels of spirituality where your life and your character becomes a true reflection of Jesus. Listen, let me tell you this. When people look at your life, you should be what Paul calls a living epistle. Do you know what that means? A living epistle means that if somebody forgot to do his morning devotion, the moment he looks at you, you become a continuation of what he was reading. That your life literally is a scripture explaining many things about God. So if he was reading, say, about the fruit of the Spirit and he had to rush for work and now he's feeling guilty that I did not read my Bible, the moment he sees you, you become a consolation because he can continue to read his Bible as he looks at you. What do people read when they look at you? For many people, they read a novel, a nasty one that says, this person is not a child of God. For someone, they read and they see that this is a child of God that is easily given to compromise. This is true for politicians. This is true for businessmen. This is true for career people. It is true for all believers. Number two, what is the second biblical index for measuring growth and maturity? Is God helping us? Number two, are you ready? Your depth of comprehension of the principles of the kingdom. Your depth of comprehension of the principles of the kingdom. This is very important. Your depth of comprehension of the principles of the kingdom. Knowledge in one word. How do I know you have attained unto a state of maturity? Knowledge. Your depth of comprehension. 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 20, please. 1 Corinthians. Hmm. God is helping someone. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me. My glory, you lift my head. But thou, O Lord, are a shield for me my glory the lifter up of my head i'm saying this because in god is lifting somebody and i believe this that you will look at your former self and marvel and wonder you will know that so this is you know how a snake molds coming out of his former self into a new self you can turn back and people will say something has changed that after what happened to you In the name of Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 14, 20. Brethren, he says, be not children in understanding. How be it in malice be children? 
but in understanding. Amen. You must grow. This kingdom is knowledge driven. This kingdom, dominion in this kingdom, you're excelling in this kingdom, walking in the victory that Christ has purchased for you is knowledge dependent. It's not an issue of sentiments or emotions. Please listen. Time will not change anything by default. The day you have knowledge, the requisite level of knowledge, I can hold this mic forever and it never comes on because the knowledge to just turn on this button is not there. I can stand blaming the mic. I can stand blaming the manufacturer, even blaming the one who's giving it to me, not knowing that all it takes for me to enjoy the blessings of this mic is to know. And you see, ignorance in this kingdom is costly. And the remedy for ignorance is to find and pursue light. Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1 says, Arise, shine, for your light is come. You don't arise and shine because you are tired of sitting. You arise and shine, not even because your light is available. It's always been there, but the day it comes to you, it sustains the power to cause you to arise and to shine. Let me quote Amplified. I love to quote what Amplified says. May God bless you. It says, Arise from the depression and the prostration in which circumstances have kept you. Rise to a new life. Hallelujah. So if you must rise from where you are, please look up. Financially, spiritually, sociologically, career-wise, you don't hand the responsibility over to God and say, one day it go better, we say, if it happens, so it happens. It's a well-intentioned cliche, but it's only a recipe for disaster. If it will ever happen to bring glory to God in your life, it will be at the instance of your accessing light, knowledge. Jesus, from age 12, he went to the temple. What was he doing? He was learning with humility. I submit to you, and I'm, I'm not just speaking to EPC. I'm, I know that there are people connecting from across the globe. I'm speaking generally. Many believers do not rise because of pride. Not because of the absence of the light. It is amazing that you can camp around defeat for many years, whereas five minutes of light can be the liberating power. Light and darkness have never had a reason to be in a contest. John 1 5 says, And the light shined in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Are we learning? For instance, please look up. You may find an individual, respectfully speaking, who may not be doing well financially, even though a sincere believer. You try to do what you know to do and it looks like it's not working. And you do not want to compromise and soil your hands. You want to walk in the dignity of kingdom integrity. But how many believers have gone to the word of God to find out? It is pride to ignore the creator's manual and expect his results. No, when you buy a product, a fridge, there is a little pamphlet that is kept there. Is that true? That is the manual's the owner's recommendation for utilizing his product. You cannot ignore the owner's manual and then expect to get that result. God is not only the God of the heavens, he is Father. The word father comes from the Greek word Abba. Abba means source. Abba means sustainer. Abba means defender. Abba means protector. If this is true about God, where is his fatherhood in our lives? It then means that there is something we are not accessing. Listen, let me tell you this. Until we are willing to take responsibility under God to say, my financial state, my spiritual state, 
this victory of demons and principalities and powers over my life, the mediocrity that surrounds my life, my job, I take responsibility. There is something I do not know until we are willing to take responsibility. We will keep excusing it, sometimes justifiably so, and yet not rise. Let God be true and all men liars. Why does it look like you can have two believers and one person both born again, maybe even born again at the same time, maybe even mentored under the same assembly or structure and then you find out that one lives an excelling victorious spiritual life one whose life is is an inspiration to the body of christ and then another would live a defeated life consoling himself but one day i know that i listen whether you choose to be abraham or lazarus you can go to heaven but how you get there matters they both made it but one went there as a defeated person scrounging through life almost missing it and one went with dignity and honor can i tell you the truth do not allow your limitations mentor people into believing that that is how God is. If men use my life to learn God, if I am the only Bible they have to read, will I misrepresent God? We have to take responsibility and allow our lives. Part of the reason why we contend for results in every area of our lives is not just for our personal benefit. We are mirrors. We are reflecting someone and we are mandated to reflect him properly. Knowledge. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 9. Paul was mentoring the church in Colossae and he began to pray for them. And in his prayer, he said he was praying to God the Father that he would grant them Colossians 1 and verse 9. He says, I pray for you to and desire that ye might be filled with number one, the knowledge of his will, and then to be filled in all wisdom, and then to be filled with spiritual understanding. There are many things that believers do not know. And we must honestly submit ourselves to learning. Please look up. If a non-believer or a young believer runs to you right now and says, I know you have been in church for 10 years. I have been oppressed. Nothing is working in my life. What will be your recommendation? Like a patient runs to a consultant. And listen, when you, when you talk to a consultant, a consultant is not only one who has gone to school. He's one who has gained experience and has learned until he's been accredited. Is that true? And while the patient is complaining, I have running stomach, headache, the consultant is looking for certain things. And he can write with uncanny mastery and say, I know what is wrong. I found out. Can you diagnose people's condition spiritually? You don't have to be a prophet. Maturity affords you the opportunity that you can look at a person's life and say, I know what is wrong. The favor of God is not on your life. Genuinely, I know what is wrong. You lack character. I know what is wrong. You do not understand the power of relationships in actualizing destiny. I know what is wrong. There is laziness and laxity. You are not productive and valuable. I know what is wrong. Your prayer life is down. Your word study life is down. I know what is wrong. There, there's the fruit of the spirit not manifesting in your life. When you look at people who are in need, how do you help them? Maturity affords you the opportunity to truly be a blessing. Because with, with a surgeon's precision, you can know what is wrong and what needs to be corrected. As our faces are seated this afternoon morning, there are many people who have several issues. I know we are laughing, but there are people who are already quarter to, you know, crying. They are almost giving up. Do we sustain the intelligence to profess solutions that work? I say this respectfully speaking because there is no reason why God should send members to any church that does not have a solution to give. Jeremiah 3.15 and I will give you pastors according to my heart. He says they will feed you with knowledge and with understanding. 
That is why I thank God for a conference like this. I see it as, I see it as a determination in the heart of the leaders and the eldership to see to it that we all together rise to higher points of maturity and stature. Hallelujah. I can tell you one thing. We love Jesus and we serve him. Not just because of things. Not just because of results. We love him for who he is. However, in our dealings with God, God is benevolent enough to allow us enjoy the blessings of being his children while we serve him. I do not believe in the Christian expression that allows an individual to intentionally live a defeated life with only heaven as a consolation. That is not in this Bible. The Bible says, I am come that ye may have life and you may have it more abundantly. This is not a marketing of flesh and carnality. Do not get me wrong. But that there is a balance. You can live a victorious life not to wait in defeat and hope that a trumpet will bail you out. He's coming as king of kings. If we are living in defeat, it is not the coming of Jesus necessarily that is the problem. Many people have been resistant to the knowledge that will help us to become excellent in life. You see that? And let me tell you this. When believers do not have consolations to their Christian experience, all the attributes of the flesh will start coming. Jealousy, envy, because if you succeed and you are succeeding extremely, and I'm suffering, I'm not exceeding. It would take God for me to not be jealous and angry and petty. It has nothing to do with being good or bad. It is the natural human condition in the face of frustration. But if we can all rise together, which is God's plan. It is not God's idea for a few people to be superstars doing well and then others sit in admiration and pain mixed with jealousy wondering why their lives are that way. No, no. Everyone has been called with a holy calling. And let me tell you the truth. The Bible says the same Lord is rich unto all. To the Yoruba person, to the Igbo person, to the Hausa person. It is not your background. Ask Esther. It is not the enmity of your brothers. Ask Joseph. It is not even your mistakes. Ask Samson. It is lack of knowledge. The requisite level of knowledge. For Jesus to produce apostles out of disciples, he spent time mentoring them methodically for three and a half years. Notice the ratio of teaching to impartation or empowerment. Empowerment and impartation came one day, but they were learning every day to the point that when Jesus resurrected, you would think he had time to celebrate his victory. He said, go back. There's still a lot we need to learn. He took them for 40 more days, teaching them on the matters of the kingdom. I am very passionate about learning what I do not know. It does not embarrass me when I find an area of ignorance. There is no point sitting in pride and struggling and paying the price. I want to tell you this. Challenges are not generic. They are only a product of the limitation of the knowledge we have or otherwise. That means what can be a mountain for you is not a mountain for another person. It is only a mountain because of how our knowledge or ignorance makes it so. This is true. Every time you are bankrupt of knowledge, my Bible says, follow them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise. It is the reason why Colossians chapter 3 and verse 16 encourages us. It says that we receive the word of Christ with meekness. It says, let the word of Christ dwell in you in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing yourself in psalms hymns and spiritual songs that it will dwell in you richly hallelujah praise the name of the lord please say knowledge one more time there are two reasons theologically speaking why jesus cried in his earth work the bible records jesus crying two times the first time he cried was in john 11 and verse 35 at the grave of lazarus 
He cried because he had lost someone so dear to him and they said, oh, how he loved him. The second reason why Jesus cried was when he stood over Jerusalem and he cried. He said, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, if thou hast known, even in this thy time, the things that pertain unto your peace, he says, but they are hid from your eyes. He cried because he saw a people, though sincere, were mad in all kinds of ignorance. We have responsibilities to go for knowledge, specific knowledge. And let me tell you this, no student learns at his terms. It's not found anywhere. There is no serious student who will learn at his terms. Have you seen a student who will go for lecture and say, lecturer, um, I know that the lecture is by eight, but let me tell you this. Um, you, I paid school fees, so you come by 12 and I'm coming for that lecture hall uh, I'm, I'm coming to the lecture hall with uh, and while he's talking say hold on hold on you are trying I don't know what you are saying I need to pick a call the student submits to the lecturer's intelligence as proof that he's willing to learn I will tell you why many people do not learn in church most times when we come we assume that the men of God do not know anything and we hope let's see if there is one or two things they have to say and so we continue to recycle pain and abort cheap victories. But things are changing in Jesus' name. That by reason of this conference, God is going to begin to help us with exactitude to pursue the requisite level of knowledge. And please look up. Do you know that if you do not have sufficient knowledge, you can have knowledge but not sufficient to bring you the results you're looking for? 1 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 2, please. We'll find somewhere to pray. I pray that God has helped us this morning. 1 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 2. 1 Corinthians 8 and verse 2. Here's what it says. If any man think that he knoweth anything. Is it in your Bible? It says he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to follow. Many of us here have been involved in the academia or in teaching. A student who gets 5%, a student who gets 25%, a student who gets 30%, and a student who gets 35%. A little question for you, who was the highest of the four? But who passed the exam? Are you seeing that now? So if you are given an award for the highest, even the one who failed the least will come to collect an award. But based on the grading system, both the person who collected the award and the person who did not even write the exam will be in the same group. This is how it is for many people. Sometimes, respectfully speaking, the little we know becomes a barrier to stop us from knowing more. In fact, Ethically speaking, the reason for most people's failure is their success. You can succeed in a way that it makes you fail. Because now you will say, is there anything more to learn? Look at Paul. At the zenith of his apostolic ministry had this to say, that I may know him. A man who wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. That I may know him. Grace and peace, he says in 1 Peter chapter 1, just write it for reference. First, 2 Peter chapter 1 from verse 2 to 4. He says, grace and peace be multiplied to you through knowledge. Through knowledge. Grace and peace is multiplied through knowledge. When people send me text messages commending me and saying, you know, their honest reviews as to the things that they feel God is doing in and through my life. I appreciate them sincerely, but I remain a student of knowledge. There are many things I do not know, and I'm not ashamed of it. I pursue knowledge with, with the determination of someone just starting. You watch those who collect the awards in any Olympic race and all of that. As soon as they are done, 
they pat themselves in the back for just a few maybe some time to rest and they get over walking again preparing for the next season you know champions because of their determination to increase not from a competitive standpoint they know that many people depend on their knowledge can I tell you something about growth nobody claps for you for the same realm twice once they clap for you once that is over for that dimension if you do not grow you will never receive any applause again Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashka na kata branda kate katos, kate branda kata pakotos koto pre kate kene kata. The phase of development, Lord, grant me the discipline.